talking about the derivation of the Riemannian curvature tensor. Um, now, before we get started, I am not a mathematician. Uh, I'm studying general relativity. Um, so I guess I'm a physicist, and really only interested here in the physical implications of the Riemannian curvature tensor and what it means uh, with regards to general relativity. So forgive me if uh, some of the mathematical um, semantics or the, the way I'm saying things about mathematics are you know a little bit off. Uh, I, have, I only have a very basic understanding of uh, I guess Riemannian geometry. So this isn't a very in-depth uh, derivation. It's just a quick uh, way um, for me, I found at least the best way to go about deriving the curvature tensor uh, in a systematic um, systematic way. So, the Riemannian curvature tensor. Um, before we start kind of a thorough um, derivation of the Riemannian curvature tensor, we have to have some basic knowledge. Um, one of the first things is that in a locally flat um, locally flat area or locally flat region of space uh, of a particular coordinate system, I guess, the order of differentiation that is normal differentiation, um, the, the, these operations commute. So you can say that uh, d mu d nu of a particular vector on acting on a particular vector uh, is the same as d nu d mu. Um, so that's the first piece of information. I'm going to assume that you've seen the Christoffel symbols, which uh, basically are these mathematical objects. They are not tensors. It's very important to realize that these are not tensors. Okay, they are just these mathematical, uh, I guess, artifacts or objects is the way to describe them that are directly related to derivatives of the metric tensor or kind of the description of the space. So they, they, they exist, and you need to know that I guess we're assuming that there are, there is some some symmetry about the covariant indices that is the lower indices. So you can switch uh, mu and nu here, and the Christoffel symbols are actually equivalent. Um, I assume you've seen some covariant differentiation, uh, the covariant derivative acting on a tensor, or in this case, uh, just a vector with a single uh, covariant index is equal to the normal derivative uh, acting on that vector in the locally flat area. Uh, and we subtract off this term, which is the Christoffel symbol, multiplied by the vector. And we are, of course, uh, contracting the gamma. We are contracting over gamma here uh, so as to maintain the integrity of the tensor equation. But this is the covariant derivative of a single covariant indexed vector. okay. And the covariant derivative is itself a tensor. It is a ten This is a tensor equation. So you can think of the covariant derivative um, with a mu index acting on a, uh, a vector, a uh, single index, single covariant index vector. You can think of that as a tensor, a rank 2 tensor, a second rank tensor, uh, T mu n. So using that, we can kind of develop an equation for the covariant derivative of a rank 2 tensor. And although it looks a little bit more complicated, it's actually the exact same equation uh, as the covariant derivative of a vector. Okay, The covariant derivative of the tensor just includes an extra term, an extra Christoffel symbol term at the end to account for the other index, the other rank of the tensor. Um, so the idea now, if you want to kind of move towards deriving the Riemannian curvature tensor, you need to consider, I guess, I don't know the exact mathematical term for this, but I guess you could say it's the second covariant derivative acting on a vector with a single covariant index. Um, so it's the covariant derivative on the J index acting, I guess, not acting on, but uh, the jth covariant derivative of the ith covariant derivative of v. Okay, So using some of the uh, things that we know already, we can think of the expression like this. Uh, you can think of it as the jth covariant derivative acting on some other tensor, tim, where tim is, of course, just the i covariant derivative of v. 
So take this expression and we're actually going to plug in uh, everywhere in the equation we just discussed, we're going to plug in the, co the i covariant derivative of v uh, everywhere in that tensor equation. So you'll see here that some of the um, indices have changed. You'll see that in the parentheses the, the you have they, they're not equivalent. The covariant indices are different. So I'm going to quickly write out each of those terms in the parentheses, um, the covariant derivatives, with the appropriate indices. Uh, I've introduced this new index L, so as to uh, the, the the contraction index L here is just a different uh, index from K, so we don't get confused when we plug all this back in, which is what we're about to do. We're going to plug these three terms back into the parentheses um, up in the second equation here, so we can kind of see how it expands out and what we have. So this is what we have. Um, we can we now have this second covariant derivative expressed in terms of all the covariant derivatives uh on the i index so um uh, what i want to do here is just um color code these these expressions the first expression i'm going to keep blue the second red and the third green um and i want to attack each of these terms uh one at a time um this is what, I mean, worked for me best. Uh, a lot of textbooks and professors kind of just do a very brute force attack at this, and they do everything at once. But I like to break it up one term, like one term at a time. And uh, that avoids any potential mistakes. So on this first term, what we're going to do is carry through the J derivative uh, to each of the terms. Um, first term is pretty easy. Now you just have a second derivative. Uh, dj di acting on v and uh, on the second term we're gonna have to use the product rule here um, so we simply use the product rule and expand out the derivative of the Christoffel symbol uh, times the vector and uh, we get something like this so the the blue the blue term expands like this the red term here all we have to do is carry through the Christoffel symbol and uh, you'll notice that the contraction of the indices is maintained very nicely. Uh, likewise with the green. We obtain a similar expression with some different um, covariant indices, but similar, very similar expression. So now that we have attacked each of these terms individually, uh, we can plug back in, but I'm not going to just plug back in, you know, haphazardly. I'm actually going to I want you to notice that there are these VL terms. That is, we're contracting over L on some of these terms. And uh, what I want to do is factor all of the VL terms out so as to have a very nice expression like so. Um, I've kept the color code so you can see where each of these terms comes from. And uh, you can see at the end here, I've factored out VL entirely. Um, and you'll see why that's a good thing to do. Uh, shortly. So this is the expression. This is pretty much as simplified as you can get. Not simplified in terms of short, nice equations, but this is a way to see exactly every term in the second covariant derivative when you do the covariant derivative of j uh, after the covariant derivative of i. So now what we consider is the same kind of process we just did, but we changed the order of covariant differentiation. And uh, unlike, obviously, the covariant derivative, the, those operations aren't going to commute. So we're going to get a different expression when we switch the index of covariant differentiation. Um, so I'm not going to go through the entire process again, but you do the exact same thing, just keeping an eye on your indices and making sure that you're doing uh, all of your contractions properly. And um, you're going to get something that looks like this. It looks very similar, very similar to the first result, but uh, obviously some of the indi indices are changed around. Um, however, we can use some of the knowledge that we already have, such as the fact that in locally flat areas, the uh, normal derivatives actually do commute with one another, so you're going to get some cancellation terms there. 
and the fact that there's symmetry about the covariant indices on the Christoffel symbols, you're also going to get some cancellations there. And it actually, uh, when you think about this now, when you think about the difference between those two expressions or those two equations, you actually get a very, very, very nice simplification, which is this. Okay, it actually all only the, the only thing that's left are those VL terms that we separated out before. Um, everything else cancels out, and you can do that as an exercise, I guess, just to add those on paper. It's a pretty quick, two-minute thing. And uh, you'll see that the only things that are left are these VL terms. Okay, so leaving them factored out, okay, you see this, this um, kind of thing that we're multiplying by th is the Ramanian curvature tensor. It has three um, covariant, well, it doesn't have to, but in the way that we've carried out our co covariant differentiation and the nature of the vector, um, this Ramanian curvature tensor has three uh, covariant indices and one contravariant index. And this is the Ramanian curvature tensor. Now, from a physics standpoint, what this means, what this kind of indicates to us is the, the nature of the space, okay? If every component of this Ramanian curvature tensor is zero, we are indeed dealing with a, um, uh, a flat space. And if every component is not zero, we can start to make some conclusions about how the space is curved.